time we are covering a flashback in the storyline where we wait for the medication to have its effect on Bruce and determine whether or not he'll how his spine is doing. So this these issues are covering the first story in Showcase 93, issues 7 and 8. Uh, these stories were written by Doug Mensch, w with art by Klaus Janssen, uh, art by Steve Brusniak, and are edited by Neil Porzner and the legendary Denny O'Neill. Now as a quick note, if you're unfamiliar with the Showcase series of anthology books that DC was putting out in the mid ninety mid to mid to late 90s, like early late, um... There are a couple of other ongoing stories in these issues which run over the course of the miniseries. I do recommend the whole, reading the whole issues, as other stories are fun too. Oftentimes, and we'll get into this as we approach the end of the Nightfall Saga, these will also end, end up leading into crossovers to other major events. Like, basically the last, like, for example, Nightfall runs so close to Zero Hour... That the last issue, that the um, last issue of the story of the, the whole Nightfall saga, um, it as far as like the epilogue is a story in a issue of um, Showcase ninety five, and I believe and involving Jean Paul and like. The second, the last story in the collection is another, uh, is a zero hour tie in. So, like, that's how close we're running with all of this in terms of once we get towards the end. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We open with Tim beating himself up for not doing more work after the breakout as we flash back to three weeks earlier. A shadowy figure takes a cab to the condemned old Gotham Municipal Courthouse, the place where Two Face was created and the figure being Harvey Dent. Dent had been laying low after the breakout, and has been remembering when Dent had partnered with Batman, Batman until Batman cut them off. So Two-Face has decided, through use of the coin, that the time has come to take down Batman for his betrayal, basically crediting Batman cutting off their partnership for the event that caused Two-Face's creation. To take down Batman, he needs enforcers in the form of a judge and a jury. He goes through the files he saved when he was a prosecutor and decides to blackmail a boss named Lyman into a meeting. At the meeting, when Lyman turns him down, Harvey flips the coin and then kills Lyman after it comes up scarred. He then gets 13 men to work through with his plan. Again, 12 jurors plus a judge. Though Lyman's men plan to betray Dent if given the opportunity. That night... <clears throat> Gordon and the GCPD are called by a body dump of Lyman's body at the Gotham Museum of Natural History. Batman shows up, and when Batman comments that the body was put in the belly of a brontosaurus, the guard, well, actually him, and in the process, gives Batman the tip-off for Two-Face's involvement, probably making it one of the few times where it's actually okay to, um, actually somebody. Batman's first lead is Lyman's club, the Egyptian, and in spite of Robin and Alfred's protestations, he goes alone. On arrival, Lyman's goons try to wrap Batman up, which goes exactly as well as you'd expect. Only, it turns out that all of this is a trap to make Batman think that he didn't get the information too easily. Batman is sent on a route over a bridge, which then gets the road service blown out from under him, sending him plunging into the river. Two-Face's goons fish Batman out of the river, and Batman tries to overpower them in the water and ultimately fails, while Two-Face looks on with a pair of binoculars. In the Batcave, Robin and Alfred wait impatiently, while at the ruins of the old courthouse, Batman's trial begins. Motions for Voidire, Clemency, and Change of Venue All denied. Nor will we hear any other pleas. Not really sure how this court would handle a Vor Dyer plea anyway. Probably mispronouncing that, but that's okay. At the trial, Batman goads Two-Face into losing his cool. This causes Two-Face to shoot the judge after the judge gets impatient before in turn opening fire on the jury, which scatters. Thankfully, Robin and Alfred had figured out where Two-Face might be holding up, and intercede with the help of a Repkin ball 
driving off the goons. He came in on a wrecking ball. Never took out so many goons. Sorry. Two-Face flees into a construction site with Batman in pursuit. The two end up on an I-beam carried by a pulley with Batman hanging, uh, hanging precariously from the beam. Seeing Batman in peril, Robin gets out a sling and nails Two-Face in the head. Batman grabs for Harvey, losing his grip on the process, and the two only escape death by Batman getting the bat grapnel out in time and swinging for safety. Awkward! As Dent is taken into custody, Batman chews Robin out. It was a bad, bad move, plain and simple, and you never should have done made it. But he was trying to kill you! It doesn't matter! What you did could have killed him! Hey, I couldn't stand by and do nothing! There was no way you could know that I'd catch him. And no way I could know you still had your grapnel, so I made a life and death judgment, all right? Yes, you did, just like Two-Face himself, and we never take our cues from the likes of him. It results in nothing but judgment and chaos, and bad judgment any time, every time. Back in the present, Bruce regains consciousness and basically tells Robin he did okay. Honestly, Robin did very much screw up there, and it is luck that Robin didn't accidentally kill Batman just now, just then, but that this is what Robin needs to hear right now. This storyline is fine. The framing narrative of the flashback feels less like the story was planned to be to be here as much as this is where they're able to fit it in, because the first six issues of Showcase 93 we're focused on a storyline with Catwoman and later Batman and Robin taking on a crime boss called Ramon Rakuda, which doesn't connect at all to the Nightfall saga, but happened in parallel with parts of it. But anyway, that's why I didn't cover it. Going from the notes on the DC Comics wiki, the last two issues of that story are also kind of extraneous. Batman and Robin finishing, finishing off Rakuda after he'd been beat. Which, Nightfall was already underway at the time, so why not slip this in there? Uh, as far as, like, the, the fighting Two-Face part. I'll let you then say Brakuda as either a Catwoman-specific rogue, um, to give her, her her own rogues gallery, as opposed to having her also running into various Batman villains. Or it lets you put him on hold for a bit for Bruce's successor to take on once he ends up assuming the mantle in a few months. I understand why to have the suspense on whether Bruce will survive. On the other hand, like at this point, when this issue is coming out, we are literally in the middle of Reign of the Superman over on Superman office. One of the things that makes the Nightfall saga unique and distinct from the Death and Re Return of Superman saga is the inherent fact that Bruce Wayne is not dead, just no longer carry on the role, and as we'll see in the next part, He'll have a hand. He's going to have a hand-picked successor, and so what makes it, thus we have Bruce Wayne off doing his own thing, with the theoretical point of at some point he's going to come back to Gotham and react to what is happening there. So, and we'll and speak to who that successor is. We will cover that next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>